housekeeping issues, uh, please mute yourself and turn your camera off if you do not uh, speak. Um, the event is recorded and the recording will be available in the Commission event page in the coming uh, days. Um, and then finally, also, we will have uh, uh, time for questions uh, at the end after the, the presentations. Uh, so unless there are no urgent questions, I, I really suggest you to keep them for later. You can also write the questions in, uh, in the chat and we will make sure to take it uh, um, afterwards. Um, so, as I said, this is the second uh, uh, of the series of workshop on business to government data sharing in cities. Last time we launched uh, our discussion with cities on their experiences, the challenges, the lessons learned uh, uh, on privately held uh, data sharing for the public interest. We had great contributions from the European Commission, which uh, provided an overview of the main uh, elements, let's say the pillars of the EU uh, data strategy, uh, which is the EU vision to create a, a single data space uh, in the EU. Uh, we also had a contribution from the JRC that presented the findings of a study on different operational models that are uh, uh, used by cities to access private sector data for public interest. And then we dived into two concrete cases from the city of Amsterdam and the city of Florence. Uh, we learned how cooperation uh, with businesses, but also with other ecosystem players is crucial for a successful uh, business to government uh, data sharing. It counts even more more than the, the technology itself. Uh, we learned also the importance to start uh, uh, working bottom up, uh, beginning with small steps and then grow uh, the collaboration and the data sharing. Uh, we learned also the challenges that cities are experiencing, that they're still facing uh, when entering negotiations with, with companies, different working cultures, different objectives, legal barriers, but also privacy, security, uh, quality of data was also one of the challenges uh, stressed uh, really. Um, all these, I guess, are, are uh, very important elements for other cities that are uh, uh, here with us to learn from, because uh, let's also remember that one of the goals of this series of workshop is uh, indeed to foster the upscaling of uh, local good data sharing practices across the EU, which is also the mission of the Living.EU initiative. Um, and, and this series of workshop is also in the framework of this uh, initiative. But also uh, all the, the, let's say, the, the lessons learned are also important uh, recommendations for the EU uh, and the EU representatives that are also here with us uh, today. Um, and because also the, the other goal, if you like, of, of this series of, of workshop is in fact to advocate cities' needs, challenges towards the EU in view also of the upcoming uh, Data Act. Today's agenda uh, includes the presentation of business to government data sharing experiences in the area of mobility from the cities of uh, Barcelona, Lisbon and Pilsen. Three cities that, of course, differ uh, in size, culture, uh, capacities, governance model, but we will see that despite all these challenges, they do have uh, similarities in their approach on data sharing. And actually, looking at their presentations, I've even recognized similarities with the experiences of Amsterdam and, and Florence that they were presented last time. So, um, I would suggest to start with the first presentation from the city of Barcelona. We have with us Manuel Valdez Lopez, uh, General Manager of Mobility and Infrastructures in uh, Barcelona City Council. He will present three concrete cases on mobility data sharing in Barcelona, explaining how data are used, for which purpose and by whom, and also the agreement for data sharing and, uh, and all the lessons learned from uh, the, the experience. So uh, let's start. I give uh, the floor to Mr. Valdez Lopez, please. Okay, thank you very much. I, I try to share the presentation. Okay. Please, thank you. Um, yeah, here. Can you see it? Yes, perfectly fine. Thanks. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much for the opportunity of participating in this event. Uh, we would like to, to share with you three experiences. Uh, two of them are in the in the field of mobility, and one in the field of utilities. 
but it's very important for the coordination of the um, mobility uh, in the place where the utilities are, are being uh, building. So uh, these are the, the, the free experiences. The first one is uh, one experience that we developed with the transportation department of the state of Spain. Uh, it's uh, Autonomous Ready. Autonomous Ready is a project of cooperation uh, between uh, transportation department, the Barcelona City Council, and Mobileye, uh, that is a technology enterprise, and delivery and transport business, different enterprises of, of, uh, of delivery in the city. Uh, this project provides a driver support uh, system that helps to prevent collisions and pedestrian with pedestrian and, and cyclists. So it's a, 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 a ADAS system that we implement in vehicles, and we can say in the in the map uh, the evolution of these vehicles around the city uh, and all that that there uh, occur. Mm, the goal is to to cut the number of accidents, identify black spots in the city, so that action can be uh, taken to improve their safety. So we use this data for uh, analyze where are the black points we have in the city and, and which are the, the main uses uh, of uh, these um, delivery floats. Um, as part of this, of this uh, project, uh, the advanced uh, driver assistance systems camera uh, sensor uh, helps to gather information from surrounding, detect the and geolocate pedestrian and cyclists, map successful areas to implement safety measures, and give us uh, an accident or a warning in case of risk. Us uh, and, and, and the drivers. So the, the data is anonymous and are aggre aggregated. Uh, and it, it works on this on this way. So the, this system installed in the in the float can identify the 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 pedestrian, the cyclist, the the, sing, the signals, and the different elements of the of the street. This is um, it. It uh, gives the inform the information to the cloud. It's anonymous information. This uh, data collection we can see in a map, and we can uh, analyze in every moment where the street is, and and then uh, we share the different results as as a compilation of all the all this data. Uh, here we have two examples. First one is the observation of cyclists in the in the way of this uh, where the, this fleet is is going on. So we we have this uh, hot map of different intensity of of cyclists in the in this way, and the second one uh, the speed of the vehicles that we have uh, with the others implemented. So with with that we can uh, use the, the information for uh, prevent. Uh, in, in our uh, 30 kilometers by hour uh, for all the city uh, goal, uh, where we have to implement physical measures for reduce, really reduce the, the speed of the vehicles because it's useful that they um, they uh, grow up the, the, the limit speed in these in these streets. This is the the first the first example. Uh, it's working on and it will work in. Uh, in, in the next few years. The second example is an enterprise, ACEFAT. Uh, this is an economic interest grouping participated by the Barcelona City Council and the main utilities companies of the city. So the water supply, telecommunication, gas, electricity, etc. And this enterprise has uh, 20 years, uh, is 20 years working on. And actually, we, we will um, include uh, another two municipalities around Barcelona. The Hospitalet de Llobregat, that it is the second uh, biggest one in Catalonia municipalities, the second one. And, and the third is, uh, is uh, Esplugas, it's another um, near to Barcelona municipality. And we will, uh, the three municipalities together in this project. I think it's, it works really, uh, really good in the city. Acefat collects a, a series of data related to graphic information on the location of the company's network and work to be carried out. So the information is not in the city council um, servers, and this, the information is in the servers of the companies. But we have a, a, a platform that can read the information from the, 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 the servers of the different companies and compilate all this information 
forgive uh, the, the global uh, information of all the companies in an and in, in a specific uh, place. So uh, the information is used to compilate uh, for the works to be carried out, for verification of feasibility, um, for practice promotion of coordinators with another possible works uh, in the same places. To inform and consult the, the all the entities that could be affected by the work, for preparing the work and permit the that is submitted to the city council for the concession or not of, of permissions, follow up to exclusion uh, execution of the of the work, and uh, facilitate information to engineers and builders about the existing networks in the subsoil, in order to avoid work accidents in effect uh, and effect of on the network, in. The, before the existence of this enterprise, uh, all the information was really in, in, in maps and it, the, the users had to, to send emails to enterprises, to different uh, utilities enterprises for obtain the information and to compile their work. It was very complicated and actually they, they can have the information in some hours. So they, they asked for the information we compile all the information from the, the servers of the of the enterprises and in question of hours we can give the information for their analysis and it's actualized because the, the, the server is of the enterprises. So the responsibility of actualizing the information is the, the same enterprise. The management of data is carried out in a strict compliance with the GDPR and the, the, the data are part of the municipality license file that is public. Um, it is an example of the map of EYS. EYS is this platform that can compilate of, of all this information, and then we, we can publish uh, this information. It's a collaboration with all the enterprises. So the third example is a uh, respect to the mobility sharing. Uh, Barcelona distributed license for sharing of bicycles and motorcycles uh, between a group of enterprises operating in the public space. Uh, after having a license, it's a prerequisite to be connected to a monitoring and control public platform and to report the request data. The task of the request uh, referred to major blocks, vehicle status and location, characteristics and tips. So with this information, uh, in collaboration with the enterprises as a requisite of the, of the license, we, we can know where are the vehicles and, and identify in the public space which are the roads they have and which are the vehicles they have put in on. Uh, what have been the benefits of this data sharing agreement? First, control and monitoring of, of all licensed fleets. And then uh, in the future, uh, when the, with the platform will be more developed, we can use or we will try to use this uh, information as historical data of possible uh, global mo mobility studies, uh, of course, with the, the, con the, the with the, the um, consentment of the of the enterprises. The technical requirement for data sharing applied to all share, uh, sharing uh, operators and refer exclusively to vehicles. It's carried out under strict G GDPR compliance. First, and then this is a scheme. Uh, in Barcelona Service Municipals is the public enterprise that have the the platform where we compliment. All, all the information, they, they ask for the information to operators and the operators give uh, the, the answer. And we complete in the cloud all this information of all the, the enterprises. So it's basically an, an automated re uh, request for periodic data sharing of the vehicles and various operators licensed of the city. So the, the data issued and processed for the corresponding monitoring and control include the automatic data request for the entry, entry fleet developed every minute. So this is the control we have of the of the information. The operators expressed their concern about the protection of location data and the identification of users. So we have not any information about the users, just the vehicles. And there is not information related to identify or identify physical persons. Not directly, no, not indirectly. And therefore, at no, no time will we will identify information of the person using the vehicle be able. And this is solely the property of the operator and the outside the scope of the platform system respecting the GDPR. This is the third example that when we are um, sharing data with the private enterprises and it's working uh, very good in this case respect to the to the data sharing. 
Thank you. It's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting to see the collaboration uh, among the many different players, because as you see, uh, there are public and private uh, entities, the municipality, the utilities, etc. I think it's uh, uh, it's really inspiring also for uh, for other cities to see how it works. I have already questions, you know, in terms of uh, also, uh, you know, privacy and, uh, and security, but maybe we can we can tackle them all later on. Um, so uh, now I would like to give the floor uh, to Lisbon, to Mr. Vasco Mora, um, advisor of the deputy mayor for mobility in the city of Lisbon. Uh, also in this case, uh, there are three concrete cases and, and lessons learned from, from the experience. So uh, please, Vasco, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, let me start sharing my screen, please. See if everything fits. I think this is the one. It's not easy to share two screens. Can you see my screen with a presentation? I think you can, right? Yes. Okay. If you can put it in presentation. I, of no? course. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Now it's live. Okay. So thank you everyone again. It's it's very good to have this opportunity, and uh, I love the ideas that Barcelona shared, and I took some notes because I think we have to to discuss the, mostly the utilities. It's quite new for us, and it makes total sense. Uh, let me share with you what uh, I brought today from you from Lisbon. So we try to have three uh, topics also. One of them is more related to transparency and efficiency. It's about sharing data uh, with, the, with the public. The other one is about multimodality and sustainability. So micro mobility as also Barcelona shared, but it's more about fetching data from the, the, the operators and making use of that. And the other one, it's something that it's, we, we are working on. It's road safety that I'll explain a little bit. And, and vulnerable road users are explained further down the road. <clears throat> so we have three projects, each one for each one of these topics. And I'll start with first one, it's urban roadworks platform. So what we did, um, we wanted to, to digitalize the urban roadworks platform because it was based on paper, it was based on emails and phone calls, and we wanted to make it more uh, easy for, 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 for things. First of all, for uh, the people from the mobility department to share, to, to, to manage the, the processes and make them more, more efficient. Then to share data with the public via a website and with the Waze app, I will come to that later, to facilitate the permit requisition for, from the companies that uh, had a lot of emails back and forth sometimes to, to comply with the data and to make enforcement easy so municipal police can check exactly uh, what's going on and if people are doing the roadworks, if they have the permit for that. So starting from the in-house, the back office management that we have now, it's fully digitalized, it's GIS, so ge geographical information system based. <clears throat> you can see that by, uh, we have a map, it's based, based on Google so solutions platform. When you pick on a specific element, you have a lot of information on the right that is uh, categorized and make it very easy to analyze and make it very easy to, to cluster things and to make reports. So it's much more uh, easy to analyze, manage, and, and to serve the people. One of the things about management is that we can see if there are overlaps in time and space, and we can postpone a new road work for the next week or next month if necessary. So this made it much, much easier because we have an instant snapshot of the city. But we also have now dashboards, reports, and KPIs with uh, large numbers that we can dig into and drill down, making it easier to see uh, the teams that did the work and they evaluate the projects, how many were done in a year, everything is much easier and compiled. And sometimes we took at the end of the year, some or the semester, some uh, days to compile all this information. Now it's plug and play, it's ready for us to, to use and to share with, the, with the, the, the executive members. But it's also a data repository, so a repository, so we can put data into it attached to the processes that is an email, as we do with emails. And we can look at them uh, afterwards and check exactly uh, why we, we assume those, those solutions and all the, the technical information that was attached to it. About the public data, we have two folds. One of them, it's a web page uh, that people can, do. it's here the link. Uh, people can check exactly what's going on for the next five days. And it's very easy for companies to see uh, uh, if they can uh, ask for a permit in this specific time. We can change the time period. To, to, to go the, uh, further down the, the, the road, the map. Um, and we can understand 
we, what what is blocked partially or totally, what the road closure or just a, a lane closure. And uh, we also um, facilitate all the information uh, exactly the same way, it's the same platform. We can understand the time period and the, 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 the timetable of the, the, the solutions that we have uh, in place. So it is in Portuguese, I did a live tr a translation so you just can understand what it is. We can say it's a temporary full uh, road closure. We have the, between 18th of May and 21st of May. This is live, this is real now. Uh, and it's only between uh, at, during at night, it's between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. So during the day, there is no problem with that for maintenance. So we organize things overnight to, to save the people, to, 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 to make it more useful for the people. But also, we also share this, and this was very interesting, a protocol with Waze. So Waze can include all this information from a reliable, trusted source, as it is the municipality of Lisbon. Uh, if you go to the Waze report, you can see there are some closures here, and they put closures on the map. I don't know why these people are happy on the closure, but that's something for Waze to, to work on, <laughs> not Lisbon. Um, but this was done yesterday, uh, some snapshots yesterday, so we can understand exactly that it's it's happening, it's live, and it's makes total sense. That's a tunnel being repaired. Uh, uh, at the end, okay, because this is, we have all, all the data repository, it's also, we automated the permit requisition. So if everything is okay, if everything complies, a PDF is generated and people get access to it by email or by their specific account, making a lot, lot easier and easing the burden, burden for the, the municipal services and that we're always uh, sending a new email. Now everything is fully automated and people have an account to request things. And last but not least, for enforcement, people now have uh, the real access uh, to real time access to the database so they can check this GIS based information and they can see if the, the, the person or the company that is doing the road work has the permits to do so. And they can check and compare the papers that they have and the permits with the, the thing, the, those that are on the, the database. So this uh, is an ongoing process. We are making uh, improvements every uh, trimester. But things have been proved to be very uh, good and to ease the burden uh, for the municipal services. The second topic is micromobility, as uh, Barcelona also presented. And one of the things that we had is micro what? So uh, when Lyme addressed this, uh, this was the, for me the concept of micromobility. This is my kid, by the way, <laughs> so I can I can use this picture. Um, so the <laughs> the idea um, is that we were not aware of micromobility. We already have bikes, shared bikes. But the things about e-scooters uh, were new to us, so there were a lot of questions that we we were uh, we were addressing at the same time. But Lime was knocking at our door and they wanted to uh, operate in the city. So one of the things that we understood is that we had to have a common language. We we wanted data from Lime so we could understand uh, uh, what was happening, but we had to have a common dialogue. We did a little benchmark and MDS and GBFS to data standards for mobility uh, arose, arose in the map and, and we pick them. Um, but of course, when you start looking at data, and this is something very interesting that I was asked also to participate was the problems. When we start looking at the data, uh, we didn't add the same dialogue, the same syntax, and we are not sharing the same information. So uh, uh, the operators, some of them were quite supported by venture capitalists and they say, no, go to Lisbon and explore and see if it, make, if it happens, they were not uh, really mobility operators, uh, and some of them just switched and mixed latitude and longitude, putting uh, some Lisbon scooters in the south of Dar es Salaam. Uh, so it's very strange. We go to the opposite side of the, of, the, uh, of the world. Some of them didn't share the latitude and longitude, so putting scooters in the, the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, <laughs> some of them keep uh, uh, increasing the number of disabled, so the broken vehicles. Uh, in their in their feed in their database, uh, and we ask why is that? It doesn't make any sense. And they say, no, no, we are reporting every problem that we have in time, uh, but we are saying that well, this standard is specific to know what is parked right now in this right in, in real time in the city of Lisbon, so we can address the parking uh, assets. Uh, and they said, oh, I didn't understand that from the specs. And it's so, so we had to do a lot of work with them to understand it. But uh, and to make this, this correct, so, so we developed a platform. The platform we uh, were considering what should we start with parking or trips? 
parking was much easier and we started with that and it was also much quieter because there was a lot of issues about data privacy and uh, around streets in, in the, the Los Angeles Department of Traffic that developed the MDS, the mobility data specification. So we started with, with the easiest one so we can also get used to that and work with the operators. Uh, and we had a meeting every fortnight, every 15 days with the operators to make it happen and to make it live. So we developed a solution on, based on open source uh, that could transfer, load and update data. Uh, this is roughly the architecture of the solution. So we import data from the clouds, from the servers of the mobility operators. We extract and transform them and, and put them into files. Then, and that's the transfer part. Then we uh, load them into effect geodatabase. So we just say, this is the positions that we have. We cross that with the referential database. So the counties, the no parking zones, and we build analytical cubes that we can analyze. So this is the data that really matters, is the things that we want to look at in a, uh, in a visualization tool. Um, and we built a Power BI solution for that. I, I omitted all the names of the operators, but I think it's uh, very interesting also to see this. We have a lot of operations going on. We fetch the data every 15 minutes. We had all these positions at once uh, in the city of Lisbon, but uh, there, there were some problems that also the, the, the solution allowed us to understand. One of them, and I'm just going to, to be back and forth, see how many disabled bikers these two operators had. So these two had a huge problem on data um, and they had a huge decrease on, oper on bikes because they said 80% of them were disabled. This was not true, but that was what the data that we were receiving and it was masking the reality on the scene. So we had to uh, do a lot of, uh, we did a lot of data cleaning to understand the, the, what we had in, in Lisbon. But we could also address things uh, in a timeline to see the effect the, the on per week or per day. This is the last 48 hours. So we have 48 stacks of hours for the last two days. Uh, and what you can understand here if is that we filter from a specific operator, this is fine. So there are just some uh, disabled vehicles every now and then, but the overall without a filter, there was someone that had a lot uh, of, of garbage that was sending us and this was not reasonable. Uh, and this was the operator that, that uh, was, sending, was sending us. The, the, the red part is obviously the disabled one. And this was uh, poor data that was being sent to us. And it took a lot of time to fix. So just having a standard and just having a feed is not good. You have to keep looking at data and making sense of that to see if it complies to what we, we ask for. We also addressed things by the, by the counties. So we have 24 counties in the city of Lisbon that we want to organize. Um, we have specific micro mobility areas. The, 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 I'll start with the no parking zones. So it's areas where the, the scooters cannot park, but we have a very specific one. It's, very, it's a hot spot. It's a very interesting thing that we did uh, uh, in time. Uh, so the no parking areas, were, we ask the operators to integrate in their own apps. So these are screenshots of their own apps. And they said to the people that you cannot park in the red areas. And they even closed their apps to uh, disable, to disable the, for them to check out with a notification saying, please go outside these, these geofences because this is not allowed to park by, by the city of Lisbon. Um, and uh, we did some grids here so we can analyze the, the, the map in, in further detail. Uh, for people that love board games, hexagons make a lot more sense to, to, to split the territory and to make visualization a reality. So it's very easy, it's very difficult to see every one of the dots, but it's very easy to, to check the specific grids and see, for, in, for instance, that there are a lot of disabled bikes here in the specific valley and we wanted to understand why. Um, and we, we looked in, into that. There is a huge bump here, a huge uh, bubble here, and this is the, a deposit of the police department that towed the vehicles, but they keep beeping while they had battery. So there is a hot spot there that is fake, and then we corrected that afterwards. But I was asking, I was telling you that we had virtual dogs or hot spots. So what we did in the center of Lisbon, it was an experiment with 200 hotspots saying that, well, the streets are, uh, so the, the pavements are a mess. Sometimes you have scooters everywhere. So let's put uh, some the sticker in the ground uh, in specific areas that we located. We did a study for that. Uh, and when it's close to demands like bus stops and underground stops, and let's ask the operators to tell people to, to park there. 
Um, and so it's, it's very reliant on communication and to make sense of that. And one of the things that you can see is that it really made sense uh, because this is the distance to the hotspots and there is a huge magnetization to the, to the left. So the, 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 well, this is not accurate because the GPS data is, not, uh, is very inaccurate, but uh, there was an, very much a uniform distribution. So things were a little bit even like a, a rectangular and they were quite moved to the left to the, to the, the less distance from the, the, the closest, uh, the nearest hotspot. So it made sense. And it's just by looking at a city, uh, we see exactly this kind of, of things that people, uh, the, the scooters were organized, were put in place, and it was easier for the pedestrians and much easier for also the riders that knew where they could find a, a, a scooter close by. Uh, just to close the, the part of micromobility, we did very uh, simple analysis on trips. Uh, we didn't catch the, the trips of the, the micro the, the scooter operators at first, but we also have uh, Gira. Gira is uh, the bike sharing scheme from Lisbon. It's a municipal service, and it's very good for tourists and residents alike. So we have by 25 euros per year, residents can uh, do their the, the, uh, illimited trips up to 45 minutes each. Uh, and we wanted to evaluate last line what was the return of investment on the, past, the cycle lanes that we were building. So were people using them or not? So if we fetch the heat map of all the trip paths since 2007, it's crazy. It covers pretty much of the city, but it's crazy. Up north, it's the airport, so it's empty in here. It's, a, uh, um, it's the mountain, uh, a, mountain uh, a natural park. But what you can also see is that if we start to shrink the timeline and make it uh, very uh, by a day or two, you can see specific lanes. And these lanes that you see that looks like bones, those are cycle passes that were built during this mandate uh, so for the last three and a half years. And this is very relevant because we know that uh, there is a specific sentence in Portuguese that is attributed to an architect, build the lakes and the ducks will come. Uh, so if you just give the infrastructure, people will use it. If you build a cycle lane, cyclists will come. And to close very shortly, uh, this is a sneak peek on the third project is the Vision Zero Road Safety. Uh, we are still doing that, so we don't have a complete project, but we analyzed all the data that came from the municipal, the, from the, the, the national police. Um, and it's a, for a, a paper first process, so <clears throat> they, took, they take notes on paper on spot and then they go to the computer and digitalize that. So there are some problems with location, specific location. GPS coding errors, no door numbers that can pinpoint a specific location. These were some errors that we have, uh, we had in 2020 data. So again, the Gulf of Guinea with the zero, zero coordinates, but also some missed coordinates that led us to very strange places. But those that 95% of the data was okay. And we can see we have a lot of uh, issues in, in the city of Lisbon for accidents, but this goes from minor injuries to road death. And we wanted to go to those that were uh, the, the worst. So we filtering the severe injuries and deaths, we were able to, to spot locations that uh, we are going, we are just now analyzing in very, uh, in extreme detail, why the accidents happened there. Is there a problem with the signage? Is there a problem with geometry? Is there a problem with the road conditions? But to put the B2G in place with this topic, uh, what we want to achieve is that we can also implement a new data layer from this, from the telco, from the telecommunications data. And we have been working with NOS, it's, a, it's one of the three major companies in, in Portugal, to have mobile network data uh, uh, and use that for mobility purposes. This is just a heat map of speeds from 60 to 70 kilometers an hour. You can see that where there is a red uh, area is that because there is a significant number of people riding at that speed and not all these roads, not all these uh, uh, roads go up to, to 60 or 70 kilometers an hour. Most of them are, are 50, so people are speeding. And if they are speeding uh, and that's permanent, we can put radars and speed cameras in place. Uh, and hopefully uh, by enforcing that and, and we can uh, re-educate the, the drivers to be more safe and to prevent road injuries and deaths. Um, so this is all from my part three projects that are going on for, uh, in Lisbon um, and it's a never-ending story we are just revising them now and then to improve um, and especially this one from Vision Zero. So um, thank you. And thank, thank you very much. Thank you.
It was extremely interesting. Also, uh, the experience of Lisbon. I mean, really, to from I think that from the presentation you can really see how many data are are there are produced, but also are really used also by the by the municipality to for the deliver of a number of different services. And this is just the, in the mobility area. So if, if we can think about in all the other policy areas, I mean, it's it's really really impressive. And then also all the importance of having common standards and data syntax, I think is, is really something to dive, I think, a bit more also uh, to, to understand. And, and also, I, I, um, I see the commonalities also with the city of Amsterdam, a presentation on starting small, right? Uh, yeah, with one sure. project and then grow uh, but, more but we, also. We, yeah, but with a vision, with a vision to-, to Of course. Start small. Of think big, think big, start small. Exactly. Indeed, indeed. Very interesting. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you so much. And, uh, and now I would like to give the floor to the last speaker from the city of Pilsen, uh, Hiri Bukshal, from, a project manager from, from the city. Here is, uh, is another uh, example. It's actually Hiri will present the approach of Pilsen on mobility data sharing and an interesting example also of cooperation with Siemens. So uh, the floor is yours. Thanks. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I hope you see my slides. Uh, yes. So jump in. Um, so uh, as, as, uh, my, my name is Yiri. I work from the city of Pilsen. I represent mm -hmm. here the, the IT organization of the city. So uh, basically uh, this IT service organization is, is the owner of most of the smart city projects in Pilsen. So it's, it's a separate entity from the city itself. But just to to explain how it's set up here. So our organization, this IT service organization, has roughly 120 uh, employees, while the, the city magistrate itself has something like 1,500 to 2,000 people. So we are serving them with all the IT infrastructure, optic cables, but not only the city administration, but also the schools, etc. But next to that, we are really uh, occupied with, with many other smart city projects, starting from supporting technical education at schools, like from really small kids, motivating to, to technical education, then supporting businesses and startups. We have some incubator, we have a shared space, shared offices, etc. So this is just a small sneak peek in or sneak look in what we are doing here. As, so we are not just this, this, this small IT organization, but something that grew much bigger in, in various smart city projects in Pilsen. Just to put you in context, unlike the much bigger cities that, that were presented before, we are, the city of Pilsen is, uh, is roughly 180,000 uh, of population, so a mid-sized city in Central Europe. Uh, so, but as I see in the presentation, uh, I think we are all uh, solving the similar issues. So today I would like to focus on, on traffic and mobility data experience that we made. First case, uh, I have a couple of uh, examples uh, prepared, but first one and uh, where I would like to spend most time is the one related to traffic sensors. That's the journey that started some five years ago here with, with the Polyvisu European project. It was the Horizon 2020 action. Uh, for the need uh, of understanding traffic in the city and, and using that for traffic modeling, we, we were trying to tap the potential of the traffic sensors that we have in the streets in the city. They are, these are the, the typical magnetic loops that, that are present probably in every city with, with traffic lights. So they are used by the traffic management system to basically run the, the traffic lights. Uh, the system in Pilsen is operated by Siemens. We have roughly 1000 sensors in, in the city and they provide real-time data every 90 seconds. The data is streamed through different means either optical cables, normal cables, or also through GSM network, depends on the location. Uh, what, we, what we realized that in theory, the city owns the data at that time, five years ago, but we really struggled to have access to it. So we, we own the sense, we own the infrastructure, we own the server, but we can't really access the, the database fully because it's, it's operated by, by, a, by a company uh, the system is Siemens, but it's not actually maintained and operated by Siemens directly, but, but by a service company here in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, so uh, the way to access the data was very like really exporting the data locally to your basically USB stick, USB stick or external drive. 
and and uh, the export was actually even limited to 10 sensors so imagine you have 1000 sensors and you can only choose 10 of them to to make your export and make make your analysis so at that time the data was really used only for some statistical yearly reports on on traffic in the city uh, very static ones so what we did and what our, how we started we we purchased thanks to the yeah effort in the polyviso project the city purchased the, the data publication module from from the traffic management system then uh, we, we 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 created an open api and and today this this data from the sensors is consumed real time by by several services first of them and most important is the real time traffic modeler application that is used by the city to to model future traffic to similarly as we have heard before we have the database of roadworks and any any restrictions and and these are fed in the traffic modeler and and then the public is provided with the ex expected future traffic not in sh not only in short time but in a couple of months ahead we are also using that data for uh, analytical traffic maps to better understand the historical data and that's very useful for for urban planning purposes what were our le learnings or um, yeah bump, <laughs> bumps uh, along the road so we realized to, to really have full access and uh, to the data that we own in theory, we had to invest additional money to to purchase this and, and have developed the, the data publication module. Uh, afterwards, once we had the data, we realized that it's not, we don't understand it, it was not well documented and there were gaps also in the data. So it was uh, quite some effort in the Polyviso project to really understand it, to realize that some sensors Sometimes there are gaps, sometimes there are uh, extraordinary error, obviously error values, etc. So uh, we have developed some algorithms to to process the data automatically. These these algorithms are now running overnight every day. So every night the 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 data is is processed and clean for those errors, and then it's available through the API. Next to that, there is the, the real-time data that is available, of course, and that's not processed. That's the raw data. Uh, and apart from, from this raw uh, data on, on the traffic density that comes from the sensors, we have some other accompanying data sets like the geometry of the road segments covered by the sensors. That's the screenshot here. And also the direct exact location of the sensors and, and the direction they, they are monitoring, etc. So these there are some more data sets related to that on our open data portal that are available for further use. Um, so that was a story about the yeah, traffic density data. So that means counts of vehicles. But uh, we have a very good idea of that now, thanks to, to this data set. But then we were also interested in, in, in knowing more about the, the patterns and the origin destination metrics of the people in the city and also the speeds of, of, uh, of the vehicles. So we, we were considering ways as a data source for that. Uh, and at the end, we, we didn't really proceed to that collaboration, which could be established by, by any public organization. Also, thanks to the fact that um, in the Czech Republic, we, we recently have a new data source, which is the, the floating car data, which is provided by uh, by a directorate of roads and highways here. So this data comes from connected cars. So it's basically a kind of data that you can uh, see at, at Google uh, real time traffic layer or Tom Tom, Tom or, or here maps, etc. So all these companies are sending this data for quite some money. Uh, what we have here in, and what covers the whole country is that, uh, yeah, Ministry of Transport or its or subordinate organization, Directorate of Roads, actually launched a tender. There is a consortium of companies which, which brings together data from multiple car fleets, and they are providing this as, as open data service. Uh, so that's what we are now consuming. So it's not totally free. I mean, the city of Pilsen or anyone who wants to use that is not paying for the data, but of course it's the taxpayer who pays for the data anyway through through the government. But what is interesting here is that this data is really covers uh, the full network, also the smaller streets, as you can see on here on the screen of the city. And we have information 
roughly every minute or every few minutes if there is no record it's every five minutes there usually is a record at least and we we have a very good idea about the speed when we put it together with the data from the detectors where we know the, the amounts of cars we have very nice picture of how many cars and how fast they are go, going in the city so um, here through the analytical maps you can see we have a speed profiles of of the of the how how actually at what hours how fast the drivers are driving so we we can have what what vasco was mentioning in lisboa same same information about where the people speed at what streets at what times what days of the week etc so uh, we have quite a powerful data analytics module that can really go back uh, several months or even years and process this data instant instantaneously to to understand it um, so that was uh, the case of the open of floating car data or connected cars data uh, that's uh, next to that we were also experimenting with with data from telco operators one of the use cases was the, uh, there was a one-time purchase of data to better understand the movement of people in the region basically the commutes to the metropolitan area so the region uh, bought the data uh, to really map from every small village at what times and how many people travels to the city at, and and vice versa and this data was used to um, to better plan or even or verify that the the public transport schedules buses trains etc are are efficient or, or whether they should be improved. So that was a one time experience with this data. And another and more regular one is, is uh, the city experience where what I'm showing here is uh, an analysis of visitors of a single event organized in the city. It's a drone fest, a UAV festival here in the city on this case. So for that, we use the telco data really to map the, the mobility patterns of, of people from what locations, what districts in the city, but also from what regions in the Czech Republic or abroad they came and, and compare it, it, that to the usual situation on usual weekend and the weekend of the event. And thanks to that, we had really, uh, we have a very good idea on how many people came from where, for how long they stayed, what were the, the age groups and, and, and uh, et cetera of, of those visitors. And the same approach is, is used by the Pilsen Tourism Organization. That's another city organization that uses this data to map actually how um, visitors come to Pilsen, tourists, like where, where they are from Czech, from abroad, how long they stay. They, we realized, for example, that typically these tourists come from Prague for a single day by bus, they visit the Pilsen brewery, they eat in the brewery, they, they have a look in the city center and they don't spend any night here and then they go back back to Prague by, by bus. So that was an interesting learning and, and motivation for the, the city tourism agency to, to attract the people to stay overnight here and uh, propose some programs for that. Um, I'm getting to the last uh, two or two examples of what we are doing with with mobility data. Um, this case is about um, city camera system, which is more than 210 cameras, the typical CCTV cameras. Uh, the it is it's used by the police as 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 everywhere, I guess. Uh, part of these cameras, it's roughly 70, and we are increasing this amount. Is, is Porsche cameras equipped with the intelligent video analytics module. So we are now trying to implement an experiment with this video analytics and this artificial intelligence. And uh, thanks to that, we are getting information on, on traffic density. So that's another source on, on uh, knowing how many cars is passing at these locations. But not only cars, that's important here. And that's a source that we don't have from anywhere else. We, we, we can have a good idea on the model split. And that's information that we know we need to know for, for the micro mobility uh, planning and understanding the pattern. So from this information from these cameras, we are able to, to learn about the numbers of cyclists, pedestrian trucks, uh, vehicle, uh, passenger cars, etc. So that's something very interesting. And when it's put in context of the other data sources, it gives a better idea about the, the micro mobility patterns in the city. Um, and uh, last case of, uh, yeah, I have a typo here. It should be bike sharing, of course. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's this, this bike sharing service named Kolem Plzni is an independent organization from the city. 
they are running the the bike rental similar as it was mentioned in 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 Lisboa, and uh, the city now initiates a collaboration with them to to have uh, we have access to the data, uh, and uh, we are considering to to make it uh, part of the city mobility dashboard, also together with the data from from the cameras on on the model split. Uh, and the goal of that, of course, is to map uh, better the, the movement of, of cyclists in the city uh, to understand how what what paths they use and uh, and of course uh, improve the the urban planning in the city in terms of providing better and safer uh, cycling uh, paths for for uh, cyclists here. Uh, so um, this is it from my side. I think I. Um, just made it in 15 minutes, so uh, I'm really happy happy to answer your questions or, or share thoughts. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, also, here are many lessons learned uh, and about challenges related to ownership, for instance, uh, analysis, processing of data, the cost uh, of data uh, as well. Um, very good, very interesting. Thank you so much. Um, I I really would like now to give the floor to to the participants to to see if there are uh, uh, questions. I'm sure there are questions. I mean, uh, there were so many uh, things uh, in 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 the presentation. So many different aspects touched. So uh, please let's uh, let's see. I check the list. You can raise your hands, or actually, if you just want to take the floor. I see here uh, hand by Eddie Artog, head of unit. Uh, please. I don't know if I can unmute you. Yeah, voila. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Federica, for chiming and thanks, colleagues, for raising this. Um, very interesting presentation and it sees i think it showcases the importance of data for also government use. I think that is one of the important things. But I fear that in a workshop, we're always scratching the surface a little bit. So I have a lot of questions, but I know that you know, won't be able to answer them. But I would like to find a pathway to answer them. And even with my team to sit down with the three presenters today to really spend half a day to drill down deep. But now, my first set of questions is around the collection of the, the data. Now, that you made the difference between real time and statistical data, which, of course, we need to distinguish. But I would also be interested in seeing how you collect the data, because I, I've noticed five ways of collecting the data. The reason why I use mobility a lot for road safety is because there's a legal obligation in the European Union for anyone that has data on road safety to share it. We don't always implement it, but some of the data are there because of a legal obligation. I'm also interested to see how much of the data are there because of a licensing agreement that you have, for example, on micro mobility, you can give a license under the condition that. So how, how do you use licensing? Do you use procurement? You mentioned the Siemens equipment uh, being procured. In your procurement, you say, uh, I think you said, oh yeah, we realize that we own the data, but we don't know how to access it. Well, maybe that's something that you need to look at in your procurement. Some of you mentioned the purchase of data. So how much is purchased? How much is from a licensed? Uh, and those sort of questions. Or how much is actually voluntary? Because we're trying to get to also a situation in a data space where there's voluntary, you know, we, we call them, um, what do you call it? Um, um, uh, well, some sort of a charity type of uh, thing, Al altruism, data altruism, that's what we call it. So that's on the collection. And I think we really need to drill down a little bit deeper in all the three cases to see where it comes from, how can we share it, how can we mobilize. Then I have a set of questions around the use. So if you get information from the mobility, can you use it in the energy sector? Can you cross-sectorize it? or? Do you get access for a specific use case and you can't go beyond that because the company would not allow you to do that? How does it work then to share it with other companies and to mix, for example, the energy and the mobility uh, use? And so I have a couple of questions there, how you can actually use that. And then the last one is sharing across. I, I, the last set is I saw two of you were referred to Waze and two of you referred to Lime. And I would be interested to see whether you compared notes on how you obtain the data, what you do with it. And because these are 
let's say bigger companies, it's Google negotiating with you. And I know that the leverage on uh, companies like Google is limited for individual cities. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the European cities all together would say, Waze, could we please have a chat with you? And I would like for all 80,000 cities to have the same data available in the European Union. You see, that is the leverage that I have. And I'm, I'm just interested to see to what extent have you been able to benefit from each other's experience with those big uh, uh, companies. So I know it's a lot of questions uh, in <laughs> one go, Federica, and I know that you can't answer them. But it's really in a workshop at that level that we need to drill down much deeper than just sort of showcase what we've done and the nice things we've done with the data. So maybe I, I can convince you to have a follow up conversation of half a day to really drill down on these sort of questions. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Um, th there are many, many questions. I, I, do, I don't know. I, I hope you took note <laughs> because uh, uh, I don't know if you are able then to, to reply to all. But I would, uh, I mean, at least try to, to, re to reply to some of them and, uh, and, to, uh, and to share again uh, the, the, the experience in that sense. Uh, please, who wants to, to reply to go first? To touch upon few of the aspects. I, can, I can start from Pilsen because uh, yeah, maybe first on the on the data on the traffic management system from Siemens. Indeed, that was a an issue because the it, the owner. I think the procurement was defined well that uh, the data is owned by the city and it's it's uh, on the city infrastructure. It's a long time ago, right? It's five years when we were resolving that issue. But nobody really was actually the problem was that nobody was really using the data in the city at that time. And thanks to that, nobody actually realized that we have a problem to, to access the full data. So only when we started as a EU project investigating different data sources uh, and using this for other purposes like traffic modeling or understanding the traffic for urban planning purposes. Then we realized that the city actually has the data, but it can't really use it. So uh, there was a, as I said, they only used it for very limited purpose of, of some statistical reports. And then with, with the evolution, we realized that this, this needs to be uh, extended or improved. And, and uh, later on, we realized that for that, there will be additional cost because an additional uh, data publication module needs to be installed and uh, customized a little bit, et cetera. And then uh, we even realized that the, the documentation of the data is not 100% clear. So there was quite some process. Uh, obviously, this could have been maybe defined better at the time of, of the procurement, but it was, uh, I guess, longer time ago at the time. And uh, what concerns the, the telco data here, I think there is no regular data sharing agreement. It's, it's mostly one-time uh, ex exports or reports which are either procured or either uh, purchased directly, uh, depending on the volume. Uh, and what concerns uh, the, the floating car data, that's, that's open data, as I mentioned, uh, published by, by the government organization. So that's, that's great for us that we have this data source here. Of course, it would be very nice to benchmark this with, with Google or TomTom or Waze data, but it would be, uh, yeah we all know quite costly and having such a means to talk to these companies as a bunch of cities or even from a European level that I guess would, would give much more uh, power to, to these negotiations. And I, I think the bike sharing data here, it's a very nice example of, of uh, voluntarily providing the data. We don't have a strict uh, regime here, like I understood Lisboa, Lis Lisboa has that all these uh, mobility providers are actually obliged to provide the data in a predefined format to the, to the platform. We don't have that yet, uh, but this, this provider actually is, is open to cooperation with the city. They are happy to cooperate and they are voluntarily providing this data actually. So that's how it is here. 
Yeah, uh, no, indeed. I think I, I recognize the, the challenges from the city of Pilsen also to other maybe medium or, or smaller uh, size cities. I mean, it's not just a matter of cost, it's also a matter of capacity. And that's uh, uh, indeed uh, the, the need uh, possibly to, to really have a common approach no, uh, at, at EU level. And that's also, I think, where Eddie wants uh, what's actually to go. Um, from Barcelona, any reaction? Yeah, yes, um, I just like to say that uh, it's very important the common action because uh, the problems we have are practically the same. So the specific cases are um, for con some are concrete for for a specific uh, situation, but in general we have the same problem. A uh, solution can be we can uh, abort the solution together. I think it will be reduce very much the energy we dedicate. To obtain and regularize this this data from from the pub, from the from the uh, private sector, I like to 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 mention in in our cases in the cases we explain it. For example, it's very interesting uh, the case of Acefat. Acefat is these enterprises that uh, um, of all the utility companies in the city. So we create a, a common enterprise, a private public, public enterprise. Uh, it's working more than twenty years. And uh, we uh, we don't um, have the information in in our servers, so we consult in every moment their servers, and the the compromise of uh, actualize the information is from from the enterprises. So in this enterprise, we have in this global enterprise, public private, mm -hmm. we have the compromise to have all the information available for the rest of the enterprises, and of course for the city council and. For the external clients that can demand information of everything, so uh, we it, first uh, stage in this in this field. But that was a specific it, agreement, right? Yes, yeah. it's the, the, the agreement that is a part of the enterprise of creation. So we we with this enterprise, it, it seems that the the um, the city council don't uh, don't have to to obtain. Um, in money from the enterprises for the execution of works. Okay, so taxes are applied to and to the creation of enterprise. And on change of this uh, taxes not, not application, these enterprises work for the city council together. And they give the information. It's a guarantee for the enterprise because they have the, the more uh, exactly information and they, they are not affected by another works or for another companies. And they can put together uh, action of different companies and it's very, very useful for the city and, and of course, for the, the user, for the contractors or, or engineers that are trying to, to, to work in the underground. But this is a, a creation of an enterprise. In Autonomy Ready, for example, this is the case of the, of the um, cooperation agreement between uh, the transportation department. We, we together with the uh, delivery transport uh, uh, enterprises, we put all the information that we obtain of the process, so of the other implement other implementation in the cars, we put all together and they have the anonymous information. Uh, we have the anonymous information of all the enterprises. They have their own information because of this cooperation agreement. We have an agreement with all the enterprises. And then the, the, the sharing is a prerequisite. So for the obtaining of the license, we prepared a, a basis of the of how how to change the information. We have a leader presentation of all the enterprises that are in in this case uh, working for for be in the in the license obtaining, and we explain all all the the language, the how to put the information, the different uh, specificities of the of this changing, and finally all the all the enterprises are giving the information in the way the city council has demanded. So uh, it's a good example because um, re really, uh, really they have to put the information on the table for having the, the license. We have some problems because we, we detected that some enterprises don't give us all the information. So mm -hmm. the, we are looking for uh, the how to contrast the information they give us with another forms of information and other sources in other places. But anyway, I think it, that the, the, the connection is very good because uh, before the, the beginning of the license uh, period, we, we had a, a different conversations with them. And finally, all there are connected, there are many enterprises. 
Thank you so much. I see there are many questions also in the chat, uh, uh, comments and, and questions. Maybe we can, uh, I, I really hope to, to give the floor to everybody. Uh, Vasco, maybe from yeah. your perspective? Yeah, I'll try to be brief. Um, Eddie, I loved your, your questions. They were, they were a lot, but they were quite organized. And I think that we have explored uh, several ways of accessing data. Um, except, I think the legal obligation to share data on road safety and that I would love to, to explore a little, a little bit further. Uh, how can we make the companies uh, uh, share mandatorily the data that they have? For instance, this, this data that I share with you with the speeds from the telco operators, should they be um, uh, uh, obliged to share that kind of data to save lives or not? That, that would be very interesting, or should we have to acquire that data? But we have data shared based on licensing. That's the micro mobility operator. So we developed an MOU with them to say, if you want to explore in the city, uh, you have to share data of parking and trips. We have the procurement, for instance, with the telco services that we have the, uh, in the city of Lisbon with all the cell phones and networking. We included the last tender an annex to say, you have to give us locations of people in, in squares of 100 per, per 100 meters in the city of Lisbon every 15 minutes, if I recall correctly, or every five minutes. <clears throat> so you cannot see the movement, the origin destination matrix, but you can see where people are uh, are present at uh, any specific time. And we will build on that uh, for probably to, to upgrade that annex, that uh, uh, the, the, the new request for the, the, the next tenders. Uh, the purchase of data, we have all, uh, also done that, for instance, with SIBS Analytics, that's a platform of all the transactions, the digital transactions with the banking card that occur on the ATM machines or on the on the on the stores, so we can understand economy levels. That was crucial uh, during the, the beginning of the pandemics to understand that restaurants was were off, uh, hairdressers were off, but pharmacies were on a high. So things like that were very very uh, relevant for us to understand, um, and and also supermarkets uh, increased largely their their sales volume. Um, and then data altruism, it's open data, I think. Uh, so people sharing data with the purpose of um, of allowing others to explore that data and to make sense of the use case that they have. Um, but uh, uh, those, I, I think the most relevant thing, and I'll come to wave is that uh, we need to be use case driven. Uh, and that's, that's something that we need to know what we want the data for. And the first principle of GPDR is data minimization. So you cannot, 10 years ago, you ask for the whole data set and you try to figure out what to do with that. Now you have to be a little bit more focused and say, this is the goal, this is the analytics I'll do. So I need these ingredients for that receipt. Um, for the ways I totally agree with you that we are all exploring this uh, big data on mobility and it would be very interesting to have a common subset for all cities. Uh, one of the things that we are doing in Euro cities in the in Smart Connected Mobility Working Group that I'm chairing uh, during this mandate is exactly trying to make a list of uh, the, the, the survival kit, what is the minimum data set that you need. So you can also not only enjoy some data and start enjoying that, but also benchmark cities in, with the same in, with KPIs and with the same metrics. And that would be amazing. Uh, but also, and just to add some pepper to, 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 to end this conversation, is that we are talking about open data, but we should also talking about open analytics and open code. One of the things that we are trying to do in the city of Lisbon, it's, it's new, so we're trying to, to it's, it's a green field, is to share the data of the, the MIMOG, the micro mobility geo gatherer that I showed you for, for the, the e scooters, so others can upgrade, enjoy an upgrade, and share with us some new modules. And we can also co create a type of analytics that are not depending on vendors that have closed source solutions, and we just get the data without understanding exactly how it happened. Uh, so there are a lot of things rolling on, and I think this, this type of meetings and uh, uh, share our commonality and our challenges, and it's a marvelous opportunity for us to work together on that. Yeah, no, thank you. That That's indeed, um, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking that in the mobility uh, area and domain, there are so, so many data uh, available and produced, but also, I mean, I think that cities are actually also advanced, you know, in the use of, of those data and processing them, analyze them, and then uh, also the need then to focus, you know, on only some data, that those that are 
you actually need in other areas maybe we will see also in the for the next in the next workshop on energy for instance and the, uh, or in many other domains actually there is actually the need to collect more data no and to access more data because the, the data are still there still produced but cities have more difficulties you know in in access them so it depends also on in which policy areas you are actually working on right and and the challenges are are different just uh, to point out this um i i wanted to give the floor to uh Roel from Amsterdam and Ron as well, uh, who raised their hand. Maybe let uh, Ron go, uh, go first, Ron. Okay. Um, yes, I uh, want to react on the, 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 the question that uh, Eddie had before, uh, just uh, to, to make a connection to the presentation we did in the first workshop. I think when we want to uh, cooperate with cities and uh, make uh, make. Ron, we cannot to... see you. Just to let you know that uh, I think your camera is. Okay. It's off. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, now better. No, we do oh, not. Okay. See. Sorry. <laughs> you have to do it without my uh, my. Okay. My... Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think when we want to cooperate with the big tech, uh, it's important to uh, for a couple of things. Uh, we have to think to make things easy for them to process uh, the data, to share our data or to get data from them through uh, the idea of uh, uh, access points, European or national access points, as I explained in, in my first uh, uh, appearance. Um, and when you have access points and uh, pilot cities are working to cooperate with these big, big companies and, and smaller cities can connect to that, that's easy for them to, to organize all these kinds of things. That's one of the things that they will be more positive about uh, cooperating with our cities. And uh, so the, the access points is important, but also strategy of having a big plan and starting small bottom up with some some cities and then other cities connecting that was my my uh, reaction yeah thanks uh Ruel? yeah my my question is also uh, uh to the cities who who presented uh um first thing thanks uh, for sharing your uh, your experiences of course um and my question kind of relates to what eddie was asking but um I was wondering if you can also share a little bit more about your uh, obstacles and and in in the use cases or perhaps in general uh, what how can we encourage companies to to share more data so so based on that how, what are the current obstacles that you could uh, tell us about and I think especially Barcelona and uh, and uh, Lisbon uh, I didn't really get a good image of their obstacles uh, yet so if if uh, if you could uh, share thanks um yes can i answer yeah sure please okay roll um the main obstacles are for me are two. First one is the the um, the, the the possible uh filtering of these that data to the rest of the of the competence so the enterprises are very, very jealous of their information and they give you the information, but with the, the confidentiality uh, as the first step, because in many, in many cases, uh, mm, they don't, don't give all the information because of competence of the rest of the enterprises. Uh, and second is the legal part. I think the legal part is very important now. And this is the, the, the reason because I think uh, we have to, to um, to try it together because uh, the general rules of uh, information sharing uh, between all the, the, the European cities is, is key for establish a basis of, of sharing information with the private enterprises. Uh, the, the, most, the, most, uh, the mostly part of the time we try uh, trying to, to, to sign an agreement, etc., with the enterprises is in in the point of, of legal, legal legality so uh it's very important to have a, a common a common uh way and the second way when when they give uh, us their information 
uh, mainly is because they have the obligation, for example, it's a, a prerequisite of the license. So if they don't give the information, they, they don't have the license. Or if they uh, uh, understand that they have um, um, advantage re related to the, to, the, to the public part. For example, in Autonomous Ready, we gave to the, the different delivery companies special uh, opportunities in the city because they have uh, in installed this other system for reducing the, the, the accidentality. So they, they, they have this uh, part of the city council and they uh, give the data for the, for the project. And then uh, in, in the case of the of ASEFAT, uh, we, we gave the opportunity to coordinate all their actions in the, in the underground of the city, in the, in the subsoil, uh, together with the action of the city hall and the rest of the companies. So they don't have to act first and unically in, a, in, a, in a different places. They can provide the, the works of another companies for their, their work. So the cost is very low and they don't have to pay the, the fee to the, to the city council because they are in the enterprises, in a, in a common enterprise, and they have the benefits of don't paying the fee, but the compromise to give the information. So, uh, and another difficult is, for example, when we, we like to, we try to, co to collect the information of the companies, uh, not, not online information and more um, static information because uh, it can change in, in, in a few days. So maybe uh, uh, when you obtain this information, for example, the, the, the fire protection uh, services of the city use the, the information of the enterprises to know when they have to act uh, in some places, where where, where are the, the the installation of of the services of the of the utilities for for the in implementation of of uh, urgency uh, works, and uh, when we uh, tried to collect this information, and we say, hey, but it's not correctly. They say, oh, we, we change it in our data, but but your your collection is is very old, very old, maybe fifteen days or one month. Or we say no, 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 it doesn't work. So we have at the same moment the information from their servers, and it's very important because the 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 responsibility the responsibility of the of the actualization of information is their responsibility. So it was a, a point that we superated with the accessing of the, all this information, and they're really they're really happy to to do it. If I can add now. Thanks. To, to thank you. Know. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Rolf, thank you for your questions. I think that uh, I would say the number one would be GPDR. Uh, so there's a lot of shielding around the, uh, behind GPDR and companies um, were, I think, more, it was more easy to access uh, uh, samples and databases that could make, uh, that could ease the process. Now everything needs to be uh, discussed up front for weeks or months before the, any type of data can be shared. Um, the other one is quality data assurance, meaning that there are a lot of solutions that present as black box figures. Uh, and when we ask for the methodology in the analytical part, they say, well, you have to trust me. And I, I start asking, tell me the background. How can I trust? What's the level of confidence? And I go to statistical terms and everything uh, drops to, to, to the floor. Uh, so people that, that raise data from, from 3,000 users or residents or whatever and they say they, they know everything about Lisbon uh, and that's that's sometimes um, a, a problem also that we cannot access the methodologies um, to make sure that we have reliable data to to work on our studies and projects um, then uh, I also I, I mentioned there are poor, poorly built operations so things for instance in micro mobility that some VCs at some point uh, some venture capitalists just injected money in operations in Lisbon without people knowing anything about uh, about mobility or about IT, making it very difficult to comply with the standards and, and to to work with a, with a certain normality as we wanted for the, the, those operations. Uh, but also, of course, looking uh, inside our home, I think that we have to close, uh, we have to develop some data and analyst, analytic department in the city of Lisbon, a more structured one. Uh, a more capable one and close the knot uh, and ju just work and uh, wor wor work hand in hand with the business side uh, because i think the it department 
is usually about, at least in Lisbon, is about keeping the, the machine alive. So you have your computer, you have an email, you have your communications, everything is running, but there are just a bunch of people that are dedicated to data analytics and to make sense of the data. Um, but, and then you have the business managers that sometimes know exactly what they want, but they don't know how to get uh, that information from data from big data. So we have to close that gap also uh, without relying too much on outsourcers again, because we can go outsource that, but usually that's a black box and we don't get the knowledge transfer to the municipality to be able to upgrade the next project and, and envision what can be done. Uh, so I think there is a mixture of, 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 of uh, uh, challenges here, but um, uh, uh, knowing exactly why you want data, what data you need to ask, getting the data, analyzing the data, getting the KPIs and feedbacking that back into the, the, the management process. Uh, I think there's a lot of chances and there are a lot of opportunities of improvement but the link has to be established. The chain has to be built. Uh, so, and then you can improve it over time. But you have to, to, to know that by using data, you can improve things, uh, but more about the process than a project. It doesn't make it much sense for me to do it like the census that you collect information for people every 10 years uh, when data is presented in real time. So you have to start getting data every semester, then every month, then every week, then every day, then every hour, if it makes sense to you. Uh, and build from that to make improvements over time on the process that we have. But those are the challenges that we are facing every day. I think most cities are. Yeah, I, I recognize uh, many of the challenges also from, from other you. cities. Um, okay, I see here we still have a few minutes. So I would like to, uh, to ask Manon, I see he sh he shared the question for Lisbon and Pilsen. Maybe want to take the floor? Yes. Manon Cohen, please. Good morning. Hi, I'm, I'm Manon Cohen from Polis Network, and I'm currently working on a European project uh, that it will enable cities to digitize their urban vehicle access regulations. And so, um, considering all the uh, projects and works that have been presented today, I was just wondering whether there were already initiatives in your cities uh, to provide data, digital information on urban vehicle access regulations, that is a low emission zone, um, pedestrian areas, uh, limited traffic zones, congestion uh, charging schemes, etc. Thank you. Wilson or uh, Iri or Vasco? Yeah, I'll, I'll be very brief here because in Pilsen we, we haven't been uh, facing that yet. We don't have any low emission zones in the city centre yet. so. That need hasn't actually occurred yet here, <laughs> so uh, that's where okay. it's though. <laughs> Someone has uh, this kind of experience who wants to to reply from yeah, um, and yeah. I, th I think uh, just the brief note. Thank you, Madam, for your question. Uh, we are working on that, and we have some things like uh, uh, ArcGIS maps that are already in place, and people can look and download. But we are. Uh, uh, we have the low emission zones in Lisbon, a very large one for pre uh, euro vehicles. We were just putting in place one specific for the town, downtown area when the pandemic came through. So we had that in place for June and we had to halt that because it would be uh, a very troublesome period for the economical uh, uh, activities in, in the downtown area that were already stripped from the pandemic. Uh, so we're looking for that in 2022, but uh, it's very interesting that uh, how can we digitalize that? I think that the first thing is to to make it available because that's what in IT it's called a slowly changing dimension. It's not something that you change every day. You can update it every three months or, or semester and it's fine. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense to have some uh, fixed URLs and things like that in place because they are very easy to achieve. But of course, we want to go up to the APIs when people can easily request the geodata and make sense of that. And also you asked for uh, congestion charging and things like that. Uh, we don't have that in Lisbon yet, uh, and we are not looking into it, but so we are looking into permanent solutions like UVARs and low emission zones where we can uh, retrofit some areas of the city and adapt congestion as a whole. Uh, and we don't have dynamic charging, we don't have dynamic tolling, uh, but for that, I think it's mandatory to have real time data for all the other uh, uh, infrastructure or projects, 
you can have those slowly changing dimensions that you just uh, you just update every now and then and you notify people with that. Um, so we are doing that, but I would say in a very simple way, not uh, totally uh, a very strong infrastructure and platform where people can connect, but making data public and available. Uh, so and, and upgrading that over time again. Maybe uh, I can, yeah. can complete. Uh, we in Barcelona, we have a low emission zone is working. Actually, uh, really, it's, it's really working. It's reducing the number of, of uh, cars uh, without uh, with the, the more. We have uh, the, the tickets uh, that gave the, the, the transport ministry uh, for all the cities. Uh, it differs the, the cars uh, in function of their contamination power. And all these cars that don't have ticket, it seems that they are the more contamination cars. There is not permission to to enter in the low emission zone uh, during the days, the working days. They can enter during the night or during the weekend. Uh, uh, and now we, we we retard the entering because of the coronavirus situation. But actually, are all the cars, tourism, motorcycles, uh, and uh, a little uh, furgos can can uh, are subjected to the low emission zone, and then the trucks and the buses will enter in July and December, respectively. So it's, it's advancing in this in this sense. And at the same time, we're working in the in the super blocks, in the green ices in the center of the city. So trying, especially trying to to uh, put the cars. It's very important to, to guarantee the communication of the city uh, by car. <laughs> we, we, we have to, to put into account that it is very important because of the of the um, the rest of the uses that they are absolutely necessary for the city, but we have to delimitate the axis uh, where, where this car came to go, and the rest of the of the of the city is practically seventy five percent is not the main the main uh, network for cars in the city, so they they can access, but ca they cannot uh, uh, pass by these zones for communicate one point with another of the city. And we are trying to to reduce uh, this number of cars, uh, reducing the, the the parking in the in the surface. So give or to the to on the ground, uh, uh, creating the 30 kilometers per hour zones that are practically 75 um, percent of the city. Uh, and then re reduction of speed around the schools, around the very fragile zones. Also, we have a very very big plan. Uh, that it's, it's complementing uh, how to, to reduce the the, the 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 lack of the of the cars in the city. So contamination, the use of public space, and then the accidentality. Thank you so much. I would like uh, to to give the floor to Andrea from the Commission um, because we still we still have one minute. Uh, but uh, and I, I thank you. you would like, voila, yeah, please. Thank you very much and uh, thank you so much for all this very interesting uh, pre examples, use cases and also the discussion afterwards. Uh, just to go back to the questions that Eddie has raised, I think you clearly uh, uh, understand that there is, a, uh, there is something that we're, we're trying to help here with is that uh, we're sharing or helping uh, cities share their experience in particular on business to government uh, access to data that is not uh, in the hands of the public administrations that is perhaps uh, not readily available, what is extremely helpful and useful for cities to manage their own um, mobility or energy and so on. However, some of the aspects um, uh, that, that have Eddie has raised have not come out completely uh, in this little uh, workshop. What we're hoping to have is to actually bring together uh, all these different uh, stakeholders, cities and the partners they work with and actually discuss in detail how to access similar types of data, like Barcelona said, very often the challenges and the needs for certain types of data are similar, to pull them together and agree on the kind of governance for a data space. Data spaces, as you heard in the last uh, workshop, are kind of um, secure environments where data can be shared under certain conditions. And we're hoping to be able to create such a data space for climate neutral and smart communities. 
So all the experience that you have, for example, by creating PPPs or ensuring an access for big tech to access similar types of data at, for example, national level, or uh, coming to agreements like you sometimes have with ways that are win-win situations, you get some data from ways, but you as a city also provide data back to them, are all very nice examples, but of course, how to uh, scale them up so that each city could benefit from the si same kind of negotiation or agreements. Therefore, we will have some funding under the Digital Europe program. Please watch out for the first call that will call for the creation of a smart communities data space, whereby the, uh, the consortium would come together and agree on this kind of a, a governance. What kind of data are the most helpful? What are the kind of agreements that you can um, or conditions that you could set on a, on, a, on a European scale between cities and their data and the data providers. And what we're also going to have is a, a some funding for validating this data space. And that's where the, uh, the question that I didn't hear addressed comes in, in terms of using cross sectoral data. We will have some possibilities to validate this governance scheme, so called blueprint for the data space to actually validate them in cross domain pilots. So how do we actually make use of mobility, energy, uh, climate uh, mitigation or, or zero pollution data in pilots where these are used uh, in an integrated manner? So uh, please watch out for that on the 2nd of June. There will be an info day on the or, or presentation on the possibilities for funding for this data space. And I look forward to to, to hearing about more interesting use cases and, and to your questions and understanding what the real challenges are so we can have a, a, a very effective uh, data space for smart communities uh, starting soon after the, the call closes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrea. I think this is a very important uh, piece uh, of information for, for all the cities. Indeed, there are many, many opportunities uh, uh, out there uh, with, uh, with the DAP, uh, with, uh, with Horizon Europe. So we are all waiting for, uh, for, the, uh, for the new calls. Um, so I, well, I take this opportunity then to, and, and this last piece of information to, to close this workshop, of course, I mean, as uh, Eddie and, uh, all the others also, uh, said there are many, many aspects to still, uh, look at and, uh, and, uh, still explore, explore more. We would need, um, possible other, a, a week to, or just on. On mobility data sharing uh, uh, to to analyze all the different aspects and find common solution. Maybe it's a good opportunity uh, for a for a follow up, uh, you know, of uh, uh, of this series of workshops. But I would like uh, today to thank all the speakers, uh, all the participants for the many many questions. I mean, I see here in the chat there are many questions. Uh, so please, also speakers, if you if you want to look at and to get in touch with uh, with the participants. Uh, you are uh, um, pleased to do so. Thank you so much. And we see uh, each other in three weeks. The next workshop uh, uh, will be on the 9th of, uh, of June from 10 to 11.30 and it will focus on uh, energy uh, data. So data sharing in the energy sector. Thank you so much and uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.